A very good afternoon and welcome to Africa Trade Brief. Today we are looking at the state of oil trade on and off the Arc continent. Let's take a look at some of our top oil producers on the continent. That's our first uh, graphic. We're taking a look at Ghana. Over 2.537 million barrels in terms of oil resources. Oil production, 57.46 million barrels a day. The reason that Ghana is an attractive destination when it comes to being an oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa is they've got good resources, a regulatory environment and investment as well. Nigeria, you can see over there as well in terms of their attractiveness, uh, a bit, doing a bit stronger than uh, Ghana when it comes to resources, the regulatory environment and investment as well. Gabon is one of the top oil producers in terms of of oil resources and oil production. However, you can see they're battling a bit there when it comes to resources and investment potential. Another key oil and gas producer on the continent is Angola, 17.645 million barrels in terms of oil resources. When it comes to their attractiveness, the resources, the regulatory environment, and the investment, all doing quite well, but investment uh, seeming to do the most as well. We go to Equatorial Guinea, 1.110, over 1.110 million barrels. Gas resources as well doing very well there. Congo, Brazzaville, Uganda and Tanzania as well as Mozambique, some of the top oil and gas producers in sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, that information is all from Deloitte. When we come to any industry, we have to look at, when we're discussing over the last year or so, what the global pandemic that we are living through did to the industry. So let's take a look now at the impact of COVID-19 on the oil and gas producing countries. When we take a look at Algeria, let's go alphabetically, uh, 50% of their exports, Algeria's gas production, that there was a decline of 24% when it came to their exports. Nigeria exports declined by 5.6% when it came to gas and by 6% when it came to oil. When we go to Equatorial Guinea, one of those top producers that we spoke about, the gas exports declined by 4%. And in Angola, the gas exports declined by 8%. When we go to Libya, we saw a 20% decline because of the impact of COVID-19. Staying in Libya, oil exports declined by 71%. So I would say that's one of the hardest hit countries when it comes to the impact of COVID-19 uh, on oil production and the exports as well. When we go to Egypt, we see that we're seeing those kind of very high numbers that Libya saw as well. 71% decline in oil exports and 20% decline in gas exports in Egypt we saw that their exports were about 10% of their gas production and their exports of crude were about 20%. Still very big figures there. Uh, that's the impact of COVID-19 on oil and gas production companies from PwC as well. Let's stay on the impact of COVID-19 and zoom into other countries and take a, another look at that or perhaps a more broader vision. The value destruction of the oil market as a result of this global pandemic one trillion U.S. dollars in oil revenue downgraded in estimated revenue projections over 20 years. The GDP impact, I know in South Africa we're looking at our GDP numbers tomorrow, but when it comes to the impact of COVID-19 on the GDP of the continent, 243 billion U.S. dollars estimated as a direct loss to GDP as a result of COVID-19, and that's also from Deloitte. So we see the kind of very hard figures, um, the impact of COVID-19, how it was impacting over the last year, and perhaps we're going to be looking at and discussing that over the next year as well, as we haven't completely recovered from the pandemic, especially on the continent, we know that there are still blocks when it comes to vaccinating people. We are in the third wave in South Africa, and that's also surely going to impact how trade takes place. Let's get back to oil production now, though, and see the state of oil production after discoveries of oil on the continent, because it's also showing that although there is a lot of oil and gas on the continent, when it comes to discovery and then building the infrastructure around that, it sometimes takes really, really long to actually get into what happened. So we can see it perhaps in Jubilee in Ghana, uh, there was a discovery of, of oil, but it's taken about five years or less than five years in terms of getting into production. And we'll see on this side that these are the delays that come when it comes to 
slower than anticipated production of oil. So you can find the oil and you can discover the resources, but when it comes to the actual production, I would say all of these countries have discovered oil and it's taking slower than anticipated um, to get the production going. If you can see the faster than anticipated graphic, there really is uh, no one country that's discovered oil and then uh, gone to plant production faster than anticipated. So let's take a look at the state of oil and gas on the continent. The chairman of the Africa Energy Chamber joins me live now. NG Ayuk, thanks so much for your time on SABC News. What would you say is the state of intra-Africa trade when it comes to oil on the continent? Thank you so much for having me. I think intra-Africa trade when it comes to oil has been slow. We have to admit that a lot of Africa's oil is still going into China and India and the United States and Europe. And we still dealing with a situation where we don't even have the refineries to refine all our oil and gas for African local consumptions. So I think our natural resources have to be for the people that live in this continent. We still have situations where we're getting oil and gas instead of it being refined in Africa because we don't have enough infrastructure and refineries, it is going to Amsterdam and it is being refined in Holland and sent back to Africa with really, really massively high prices for the everyday African consumers. So trade within Africa is still slow, it's still limited. Road infrastructure, because it would, around many countries, is still hard. So to transport with trucks and around our different African countries is still tough. Customs are still a problem with getting trucks and um, trucks moving from one country to another. We need to tear down these barriers. We need to break these limits and encourage an environment for oil products to move safely. Because when that happens, the consumer gets his products cheaper and better and our industries can grow. I'm glad you've spoken about the disconnect between the oil production and the kind of decisions that are made. One of the decisions that was made recently is that Africa Oil and Gas Week is going to be held in Dubai, not in Cape Town, as it was held before. And that kind of feeds into what you were saying and also talks uh, to this kind of resources curse where the continent is very rich in the minerals and the oil and gas. But when it comes to the actual production and doing, there isn't seemingly much progress what needs to be done that um, what needs to be done is that we have to start taking pride in our african resources and really changing that africa oil week after 21 years of strong support from the south african government the african people and the city of cape town because of covid 19 which it's a global pandemic. It's not a South African pandemic. It's not a Cape Townian pandemic. They decide because for profit, they are going to move out of South, of South Africa and go to Dubai. And this is, this is not just um, a conference organizing issue. This issue is that we are going into COVID-19 in November. Big decisions on energy transition on how gas resources and oil and gas resources. The IE are going to be discussed. The IE said no more investment in African oil and gas. And now you're going to have those discussions in Dubai on how on a way forward. It's like playing the Africa Cup of Nations in uh, outside Africa or the African Union saying we are going to meet in Dubai to discuss African matters instead of here in Africa. But the big thing among that is that the industry is on its deathbed. When you cut out financing and you cut out any investment coming into Africa oil and gas industry, imagine what's going to happen. And I'll give you and I'll give you this scenario. From Tanzania to Mozambique and down to South Africa, the gas that has been discovered in these three countries would make would make these three countries the second or third largest producers of gas in the world. They, Afri these three countries would probably have enough gas to serve the entire Africa and the world and would be able to change our economies and produce urea, ammonia, NPK, um, different kind of fertilizer plants to grow our economies. You will not be having that. 
when you don't have investments, we discover that South Africa was a country that was rid enough when it came to oil and gas. Yesterday's nobody, today's somebody. So we are about to experience a bonanza, not only in South Africa, and I'm not even talking about the gas in Nigeria, Ghana, and Equatorial Guinea and others, just in South Africa and Mozambique and Tanzania, and then we, we, and then we just move away. We said, no, we're not going to talk about this anymore in Africa. We will talk about this in Dubai. How do you tell a young kid who is trying to get in this industry that has been working so hard and say, you're not going to go to Cape Town. Now you would have to go to Dubai to try to get into Africa. And I think that's wrong. We need to change that. Uh, so when it comes to operating on the continent, there are some challenges that you've spoken about in terms of infrastructure. You spoke about Amsterdam as well. But security, never mind climate change and the like that are also going to impact. Security is a very big issue. We've seen that most recently with the Total uh, plant in Mozambique, the insurgencies there, the fighting there that has led to almost a disinvestment or pulling back by Total. So there's a lot that the continent needs to do before it can also be one of the major producers um, in terms of the entire value chain. We need, we need to address security issues. Energy security is key. And this is not just an issue of just dealing with, with, with uh, some security among a band of um, terrorists, which need to be hunted down and taken care of. But we also have to change the way we look at the industry from the past. We have to look at the socioeconomic issues around the, around the, around the area. Communities where oil and gas are found have traditionally not been dealt with perfectly. For example, look at in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Look at the Saudi, the English-speaking areas in the Cameroons. Um, look at the other areas in Uganda or Tanzania and Mozambique today. We have to deal with these communities seriously. We have to deal with their issues, and we have to also address them. But energy infrastructure, when it comes to you know, pipelines and all of that, that is necessary. But I think our governments also have a role to play. We cannot outsource this and just say this is something that's going to be left for the investor or the Europeans to take care of. We have to get our home ready, be with security, and also build infrastructure so that it can encourage these, these things to happen. And we must do everything to keep our country safe because that's the only way investors are going to come in. They do pay attention to that and money for who want to go where it's safe and welcome. Andrew Ayuk, Chairman of the Africa Energy Chamber, joining me live there. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Still so much to talk about when it comes to that. But let's take now a look at how African markets and currencies are performing. We spoke about GDP a little bit earlier on. South Africa's economic growth expected to have picked up when those GDP figures are released tomorrow. I'll have more on this after a short break. Do stay with us on On Point.